have my regular tabletop stream of the week I'm recording this, so it's going to eat into a big chunk of my time. And also, it's going to be my birthday, so I'm going to treat myself by doing a lighter vlog-style video. In this case, discussing one of my birthday presents. Specifically, I got, this is not just the standard Switch. This is the Switch OLED. I decided to upgrade my Nintendo Switch and give some quick thoughts on it. I've been using it for about a month now. I've mainly been playing, I've played a couple games on, a few games on it, but mainly I've been focusing on some Fire Emblem Three Houses. Um, this was a game where I dabbled on it a bit in handheld mode before on the previous model, and it was okay. Um, but I did absolutely recognize the issue that, and experience the issue that people were having with the original Switch, where that for text for some games, and Fire Emblem Three Houses was one of the ones that was frequently brought up as an example, um, there were some readability issues in terms of eye strain and size of text. And so I figured if I'm going to try out the Switch OLED and see how well it works, this would be the way to do it. Because I'd done some other RPGs with some smaller text and had a bit more su success with them. I'd played in particular, um, the the Labyrinth of, and I'm going to forget the name of it, so I'm going to, um, so I'm just going to pull it up on the home screen, on mine, just a moment. Labyrinth of Refrain. I played some Labyrinth of Refrain, um, in handheld mode. And that had worked out okay, but the font size for the text for the main screens and such generally worked out all right. Um, Sub-menus and stuff did give me a bit of eye strain problems. So I looked, so when I decided to upgrade to the Switch OLED, I went to uh, give it a try with Fire Emblem Three Houses, and is this? I have been spending significantly more time playing it. Like I have been able to go through it for several, um, for one game, several weeks, basically a month, because I got this for myself at around Christmas, and it has been a absolute pleasure to play. Um, I will note that certain issues, other issues of the Nintendo Switch from the old model, still linger. You'll notice I have the Hori Split Pad, Pad Pro on this, that is because the Joy-Cons, when hooked up directly on the uh, Switch itself, are uncomfortable on my hands. I have fairly large hands. I'm I'm not even like that particularly tall. I'm, that's what kind of impacts your hand size. I'm like, or one of the things that can impact your hand size, I'm 5'11". Um, but, I found that playing the Switch for extended periods of time gave me hand cramps, even if I was, or the hand pain, more hand pain and messed with my RSI. Even if I used a drop case that would um, give an ergonomic grip because of the size of the Joy-Cons and the button positions and all of that, it still aggravated those problems. So the Hori Split Pad Pro still is a necessity with the, um, with the OLED switch. However, readability is great, um, both in terms of just general dialogue, uh, menu text, uh, tool tips for describing what abilities do, all that sort of thing. Like All the text problems are fine. Um, the animation for battle scenes um, also works well. Admittedly, I have not played any platformers on it using this in this mode yet. I haven't played I've been playing Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, the Switch version, off and on. I haven't gotten to that yet. I do have also uh, Katana Zero loaded on this as well. I should, I still need to give that a try in um, handheld mode. That said, it works well. Um, it addresses the issues that I got this for in the first place. It's, and consequently, this is like, with the exception of the big 3D graphics, um, like really hardcore JRPG, not, not hardcore JRPGs, but for your um, 
stuff like for the very graphic intensive jrpgs like for the witcher or not just jrpgs but our console and japanese rpgs in general like the witcher like for um tales of arise i mean that doesn't have a version on this anyway but for like that sort of thing i'm gonna stick with those on consoles um if given like if given the choice between playing persona 5 on a on just a standard console on the switch i'll probably play it on a standard console but this for uh smaller less graphically intensive games um i think this is a nice choice i now i picked up final fantasy 7 uh a crisis core remastered on the switch and i have not, i haven't started playing that one yet um main and i'm interested in seeing how that goes because one had from what i've heard and i've seen there's been some really good graphical overhaul work done and to get things up in a 4k standpoint and i appreciate that on the regular consoles but on the other hand crisis core having been a psp game originally feels paced for the kind of bite-sized play that works well with the handheld so i'm interested in seeing how all of this works out so short little bite-sized video for the handheld console and my upgrades on that as far as my old switch i have that basically planned to work as a dedicated exercise game system it's going to be for ring fit adventure and um switch fitness boxing and that sort of thing um but yeah i'm looking forward but like there's the three houses i've got chained echoes loaded on there now i'm interested in looking to playing that as well because this this feels like the right way to play these kind of games for me in terms of like these not necessarily graphically intensive games ones that i can play in bits and chunks or what have you i could have i can play on my handheld while um on my computer i'm doing a big bulk render of tactics ogre and that sort of thing or on uh, and then like have a movie on the television or what have you or games done quick or that sort of thing um this feels like a good way for that so that that's my thoughts on the switch oled um I did like uh ease of getting the micro sd card in uh transferring saves and stuff was a bit of a hassle um just because for it to work you have to like for it to work properly you have to have not created your account on this device but you have to be able to get to the home screen to do it so and you and the switch when new out of the box won't let you not go through not create an account and particularly not create a nintendo online attached account when you're creating it so that that's just a pain and a half um so i had to kind of transfer a lot of stuff over the old fact the, the long way and that was that was a hassle but it that worked out that was probably the big minus of the whole thing i do like that the switch oled dock has a built-in um ethernet port on it because like my wi-fi in the house is good but if i'm going to want a good fast download speeds for games that i'm well, downloading they purchased on the computer or what have you um i like it that way i like to have it over ethernet wi-fi um i'm not doing as much Wi-Fi stuff, not Wi-Fi stuff, but uh, online gaming stuff, so I can't speak for latency there. Um, and that covers most of the things that I have to talk about. He says for the third time, but I think that covers most of it. So, um, I guess for my request for engagement, um, any other games where they're the text or for the switch where the text is an issue on the regular version but is significantly more readable in handheld mode on the oled 
I'd be interested in picking more games of that kind up, um, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.